In this video, I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this using some very basic techniques and tools in DaVinci Resolve 18. Because cinematic color grading doesn't have to be complicated or difficult and it also shouldn't take hours to get a good result. I'm gonna show you how to color grade cinematically without losing your sanity. Wow. <laughs> Now, the first thing you should know is that there's not just one cinematic color grade. I mean, some people think it's teal and orange because it is very popular and I like it too, but color grading your videos cinematically just means that you're gonna amplify the mood and atmosphere through the colors and the contrast. And that's why I love cinematic color grading so much. Even my dreams are cinematically color graded. When I dream about Mexico, boom, it's all yellow, just like all the movies. And when I have a nightmare, it's all dark and blue. If your video is all happy and uplifting, unicorns and rainbows and bubblegum, I don't know, then you probably shouldn't color grade it all dark and blue. But that doesn't mean that there's not a dozen other options to make it look colorful and bright. That's what I like about cinematic color grading, it's so diverse. So you know, this video is not so much about a specific look, but more about the tools and techniques that I use to create that look in DaVinci Resolve, fast. And I'll put a link to the footage that I will use as an example in the description, so that you can use that to follow along. That's how generous I am. I mean, I'm way too good for this world. First of all, the footage of this super handsome fella was shot on the Sony a7S III in S-Log3. So the first thing we need to do is bring that flat looking log footage into the Rec. 709 color space so that it looks like standard footage with natural looking colors and contrast. And the easiest way to do that is with a color space transform. So go to effects here, find the color space transform and drop it onto a node. There. Then set the input gamma and color space to whatever you used to shoot the footage. In my case, it's sgamma3.cine and slog3. And output, I can just leave it to use timeline because in my project settings here, I have already set my color space to rec 709. And I'll link another video in the description if you want to learn more about these color spaces. And it actually looks pretty decent now. Even the white balance looks almost perfect because it was a cloudy day so it looks good. I'll leave it like that for now. The only thing I do want to change is the brightness and the contrast, just a little bit. And this is actually a very important step whenever you're color grading cinematically, color correction. You want the image to look natural, with a natural looking contrast and colors also. White balance, tint, those things. And usually I also bring down the highlights just a little bit because I don't know if you have noticed this, but in movies, the highlights are never 100% white. They're always toned down just a little bit. Same for the shadows, they're almost never crushed. But I mean, if you like a harsh contrast, then just go for it, I'm not gonna stop you. But that's what I do. So let's create a new node before the color space transform. And that's important because if you do these adjustments after the color space transform, especially messing with the highlights and the shadows, you might lose color information. Again, I'll link a video on this in the description. And then for the brightness and the contrast, you could use the color wheels, gain for the highlights, lift for the shadows, or the offset for the whole image. And you could also use the log wheels. And here it says shadows and highlights specifically. And the difference is that the log wheels are more specific. So if you adjust the color wheels, the gain for example, then it will affect a wider range of the highlights than if you use the log wheels, the highlight wheel. Does that make sense? I hope it does. But anyway, I'm not gonna use the color wheels now, I'm just gonna use the curves. Simple, just drag down the highlights here, just a little bit, and you can always come back here and adjust it whenever you want, of course. Just try to keep everything visible in the waveform, so you don't want any shadows disappearing down here, or highlights disappearing at the top here. And like I said, the white balance looks perfect right now, so I'll leave it but maybe I'll slide the tint a few notches towards green. I don't know, I feel like it'll look better. Okay, so that's color correction. And of course you can create as many nodes here as you want. One for white balance, one for contrast, one for shadows and so on. Then create another node after the color space transform. And I'm going to use that one to apply another color space transform. So effect color space transform, drop it onto that node. 
And all I'm gonna do here is set the output gamma to Cineon film log. Why? Because I'm going to use one of DaVinci Resolve's built-in film look LUTs as a base for my color grade. And these built-in LUTs look awesome and they'll allow you to create a cool look super fast, but they're designed for Cineon film gamma. So that's why I have to convert this Rec 709 gamma to Cineon gamma. So here in the output, just change the output color gamma to Cineon film log. And then just add another node for the LUT. Go to LUTs and find the film look LUTs. And these are the ones that we want, the Rec 709 LUTs. They're all great, but I'm gonna use the second one of the Kodak looks. There. And it looks great now, but the LUT cranked up the brightness again. But no problem, I can just go back to the first node and adjust the brightness. Let's put these nodes down here first. There. Okay, so let's bring down the highlights here just a little bit. I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm just gonna bring down the gain a little bit and also the highlights specifically because the sky here, it's too much. I don't want it to look gray, of course, but just a little bit toned down like this. There. And it actually looks really good now. But remember that I'm just playing around here. Don't think that you have to follow these steps exactly whenever you want to create a cinematic look. No, I'm just showing you how you can create that look. The techniques, the tools in DaVinci Resolve. Because if you'd want to, you could go in a completely different direction. And what I'm doing here, the adjustments that I'm making, maybe it doesn't work for the footage that you're working with. It might not work if your footage was shot in the desert, for example, or in the snow, maybe. You know what I mean? So don't follow these steps exactly every time you're gonna color grade. But we're also not done yet. This is just the base for our color grade. Now it's time to get creative. But first, I wanna talk about Motion VFX, the sponsor of this video. If you're looking for some epic cinematic titles or motion graphics to take your videos to the next level, Motion VFX is the place to be. They offer a ton of awesome plugins for DaVinci Resolve, but also Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro, LUTs, callouts, titles, you name it. Some of my favorites right now are M-Title Film and M-Title Cinematic. They just give your videos that epic Hollywood vibe, you know? And the great thing about Motion VFX is that all the plugins are plug and play. So just drop a title onto your timeline, tweak the settings a little bit and you're done. It works. And right now they have black deals going until the 4th of December. 30% off if you use the code BLACK30. You also get a free plugin called Mholo if you spend at least $100 and this plugin is only available during the black deals. And every week, four plugins will be 50% off. Just check it out, the link is in the description. And thank you so much, Motion VFX, for sponsoring this video. Okay, and now let's finish the color grade. Let's add another node. And we actually already have a mild teal and orange look going on here. So let me show you how you can make it even stronger. But I don't want any of the adjustments affecting the skin tones. So what I'll do is I'll use the qualifier to make a selection of my face. You can use the sliders here or the qualifier tool and you can hit shift plus H if you want to see the selection. And once you have everything selected, denoise it to make the edges softer and then I'm gonna create another node. Select that node and hit option plus L to create a layer node. Connect blue with blue here. And now everything I do in this node won't affect the skin. See, my skin is basically layered on top of this node. So in this node, I could tweak my skin a little bit. For example, push in some more warm tones. And in this node, I can tweak everything else without it affecting my skin tones. And now you have the power, right? Because, I mean, there are so many possibilities now. Maybe let's just add a little bit of teal in the shadows. In the lift and the gamma here. Just a little bit, don't overdo it. But I mean, like I said, you can get creative now. Because the skin tones are safe. But I think that this is enough for now. You could, of course, also start changing the hue of certain colors. Everything's possible. And you know what? Let's also emphasize the orange tones a little bit more since we're going in the direction of that teal and orange anyway. Add another node here 
and let's select the plants in the background that are already a bit more yellowy, warm green. So I want some of the greenery in the back there. Then denoise it and now I'm gonna push some orange in the gamma here. Again, not too much. There. And now we have a real teal and orange look, but you can tweak it however you want. You can make it strong, less strong, whatever you want. And then the final touch, something a lot of people forget, you don't want your blacks, your shadows to look dirty, like greenishy blue. So let's clean up the shadows real quick, add another node all the way at the end, go to the curves, and then luminance versus saturation. Create an anchor point here and pull down the saturation for the shadows. And it's very subtle, you almost won't see it, but let me exaggerate it a little bit so you can see what happens. See? It will just desaturate the shadows so that they're clean black. Or another option is to go to the shadows wheel and push towards the opposite of the colors you want gone. So push towards red and orange if you want to remove teal from the shadows. Okay, and then finally, always check the white balance again, because a tiny adjustment to the white balance can make all the difference. And I think that's about it, guys. I mean, you can create a ton of different looks using some very basic techniques and tools. At first, it might seem a bit overwhelming because there are so many nodes, but once you understand how these nodes work, you'll see that it's not that complicated. Just practice it, practice, 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 that's what I always say. And yeah, you'll get it. Thank you so much for being here. Whoa, I, I don't remember my, my outro anymore. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Wow. <laughs>